All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone who taught me this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole full elect. Shalom. All right, and Lord will, this video is edifying. Now, basically, this is going to, all right, the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, basically, how he's going to return, okay, with pure power. All right, the fashion that he's going to uh, come to the earth in, the so called UFOs, the chariots, the clouds, okay? And how basically, all right, people are going to be moved. They're going to be shook, all right, when they see Yahweh Shai, uh, okay, enter in, into this realm, okay? So this is the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3. It says, The Lord Yahweh is a man of war. The Lord Yahweh is his name. You see, the Heavenly Father, like the scriptures say, is a man of war. But who also is a man of war? Yahweh Shai. All right, and I have a precept on that. In uh, Khan, Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 18, verse 15, it says, Thine almighty word, okay, and who's the word of the Lord? That's Yahweh Shai. The scriptures say how I mean, uh John 1 and 1 how the word was uh how I said like the word was in the beginning. Alright, the word was with God and you know, okay, that's your how shot. Alright. It says thine almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of of the of a land of destruction. So Yahweh shot, okay, it's also a man of war. Okay, all right. Let me get another precept. Kind. It's like for the music in the background. This is Isaiah chapter forty-seven, verse one. It says, "Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate." Now, this old virgin daughter of Babylon. It's talking about what? America, which is Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, but it also represents who? Esau. Because Esau, the so-called white man, the children of Edom, they ruled the daughter of Babylon. You see? All right? Because I bring this out a lot. In the book of Daniel, you read about what? The, uh, those five kingdoms, which are what? The Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, then the Romans. Then you have what? An everlasting kingdom. All right? That last kingdom is what? The everlasting kingdom. That kingdom that will last for eternity, and that's the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, the kingdom of Jacob, the kingdom of Israel. Now, the fourth beast, everybody knows, all right, that the fourth kingdom is what? The Roman Empire, okay? Now, Rome already fell, so why do we not see, all right, this everlasting kingdom, the, the kingdom of eternity? Why, why do we not see Yahweh Shai reigning upon the earth? That's because when Rome fell, that wasn't the end-all, be-all for the Roman Empire. Rome will come back as what? In a form of America, NATO, and the EU. And that's what? That's the whore that sits upon the beast with seven heads and ten horns. The whore is America and the beast is what? NATO and the EU. You see, and this is what we're living in today. And Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, they're going to return to the earth and take down this fourth kingdom. Take down the so-called white man. Take down America, man. You see? And then establish that everlasting kingdom. And this was going to take place in the earth. So it says, come down and sit in the dust. The dust represents what? Confusion. O virgin daughter of Babylon. Once again, what does the daughter of Babylon represent? It represents America, but it also represents who? The so-called white man. All right. This is Psalms chapter 137, verse 7. It says, remember, O Lord, Yahweh, the children of Edom. All right. And who ruled the ancient Roman Empire? The Edomites. Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, Tiberius Caesar, Dolor. Edom, Esau, all right, all right, uh, uh, Titus, Domitian, uh, Vespasian, okay, Edomites, man, all right, those were the children of Edom, okay, and they're the same uh, nation of people that crucified our Lord, okay, and we're, we're finna get into that too, okay, remember, O oh Lord, Yahweh, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, next verse, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be, thou what is thee as thou hast served us. You see? Because in these end times, the children of Edom will rule the daughter of Babylon, which is America. They will rule this fourth beast. You see? And the revival of this fourth beast is what? America, NATO, and the EU. Okay? 
all right and we and, and edom in the scriptures is known as what the wicked all right that's why the scriptures say job 9 24 the earth is given into the hands of the wicked okay these are the people that rule over the earth okay now let's go back to isaiah 47 and let's get the full verse because you have side when he returns he's finna get at esau man okay verse three it says sit thou silent get thee into darkness O daughter of the chaldeans actually i'm gonna read up the verse i'm gonna read up the verse actually slack it i'm gonna go to verse three it says thy nakedness shall be uncovered yeah thy shame shall be seen i will take vengeance and i will not meet thee as a man you see because when your house shall return to the earth he's gonna take vengeance but what he's gonna come with what pure power man Yahweh Shai is finna come with power, okay? And let's go to Isaiah 63. Let's go get that. Let's go into what? The day of the Lord's vengeance, man. Let's go get, let's go into that, okay? Come on. Let's go into that real quick. Isaiah 63, verse 1, it says, Who is this that coming from Edom? Who is this man, all right? That coming from Edom. It says, with dyed garments. So not only does he come from Edom, all right, he has dyed garments. It says dyed garments from Basra, which is a land, which is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the city of Edom. But we know Basra represents what? America. All right, Basra represents America, which will be destroyed in these end times. It says, This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? You see why your garments die. You see why your garments are why you red in, in your apparel. All right, who is this that coming from Edom? Who is this man? Okay, it says, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. Now let's start right there. Now, what man is finna tread the wine press of the wrath of the most high? Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Okay, Revelation chapter 19, 19, verse 11. It says, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. That's the guy. That's the sky cracking. You know, when the scriptures say heaven open, that's the, so the sky cracking. And that white horse is talking about what? A chariot, a so-called UFO. Okay. When Yahweh sight enters into this realm, it says, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. So when Yahweh sight returns to the earth, what he's going to do? He's going to judge and make war. But who he's going to make war with? Revelation the 17th chapter, the beast. The scriptures say what? These shall make war with the lamb. All right, and we know who the lamb is. The lamb is Yahweh Shai. And even this, even this chapter is finna go into that. Who Yahweh Shai will make war with. He's gonna make war with the beast, which is what? The beast with seven heads and ten horns on which the horse sitteth. America, NATO, and the EU. This revived Roman Empire, man. Okay? It says, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself going into his rank. Because once again, Yahweh Shai is finna come with pure power, man. He's finna subdue all nations under his feet. All, all his enemies are finna be under his feet. Like the scriptures say, uh, the Lord Yahweh said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. You see, that's why the scriptures say the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his anointed. Everything is going to be subdued under Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven, which is the upper atmosphere, not every time you see the word heaven, it's talking about the spiritual realm. You see? All right? It's talking about the upper atmosphere where you look up, you see the clouds, the stars, the sky, the sun, the moon. That's also considered the heavens. That's why you read the scriptures you go into what? The war in heaven. Because that's Yahweh Shah making war with who? The dragon, which is what? The Roman Empire, man. Okay? The great red dragon is the same what? Beast with seven heads and ten horns. Because the scriptures say what? The red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And what the scriptures say? The scarlet colored beast. And scarlet is what? When you get a definition, a brilliant red color. You see? Which is what? The red beast. All right, the brilliant, the scarlet colored beast or the red colored beast with seven heads and ten horns is still speaking about Rome. Okay, Yahweh Shai and the angels finna make war with these people. All right, and Yahweh Shai finna come with pure power. It says, and the armies which are in heaven, the angels, follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth 
forth the sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron he treadeth watch this it says in he who's the he the word of the most high and he what oh that's your shot man and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power you see that man Yahweh shy from the come of pure power. He's from to take vengeance. And he's from to meet who? He's from to meet Edom. He's from to meet the wicked. Okay? That's what's from to happen, man. So let's go back to Isaiah 63. It says, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. Alright? And you know when you when you like, if you if I'm not mistaken, no, is it anger? Okay, one one of the one I can't explain, it, but you know, you're outside from the come with power, man. All right, the scriptures say how all power in heaven and earth has been given unto who you're outside, man. You're is the most is the is the uh the second most powerful being in existence, man. And he has wrath against Esau. All right, how would you, man? That's crazy, okay, because you have you have you you angered not only did you anger. The most powerful being in existence was the heavenly father you angered the second most powerful being in existence which is your shot and 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 your shot he gonna want smoke when he returns back man you see and, and hey like the spirit say they were they were dust afraid but yet durst fight roughly paraphrasing you see and they from the lose utterly man okay let's let's keep reading it says i have tried in the wine press alone and of the people there was none with me for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. So this tells us who this is. Who is this man that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? It's Yahweh, man. Yahweh, side finna meet Edom. You see? The what the scripture said, I will not meet thee as a man. Okay? It says, uh, and their blood was sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment for the day of vengeance. What hey for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. You see that? What the scriptures say, I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Yahweh shall from to come with pure power. You see that? Okay? With the angels, with the chariots, man. Okay. Now, where do I want to go now? Let's go to uh Revelation 1 and 7. It says, Behold. He cometh with clouds. Who's the he? That's Yahweh Shai. He's the one that's going to come with the clouds, the chairs, the so-called UFOs. All right. It says, and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced them. You see, they also which pierced them. And that's what? That's a reincarnation scripture. Because that that because that soldier, remember, had pierced the Lord. You see, and you know, these people, they're back in the reincarnation for what? For judgment, man. All right, like the scriptures say, I will take vengeance. The day of vengeance is in my heart. Okay, so even the ones that pierce the Lord, they're gonna be on the earth, man. They're gonna see the Lord. You see, man. It says, and they also which pierced them, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because. And when you get a definition of wail, it goes into to cry and to howl, man. All right, they're gonna see the Lord, man. Come with power, come with glory, come with the chariots, the angels, man. Okay, shall well because him, even so are mine. I got another precept, Matthew 24 and 30. We're going to read about it. It says, Matthew chapter 24, verse 30 says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Now remember, heaven don't always mean the spiritual realm. It can mean the upper atmosphere where you look into the sky. Okay, it says, The sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. You see, one scripture say the kings of the earth shall well. Now this verse saying the tribes of the earth shall mourn, man. You see, people are going to be scared. You know, they're going to be trembling. Okay, they're going to be shook. All right. When they see Yahweh Shai, it says, and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, man. You see, all right. The, the, the great day of the Lord. And what the scriptures say? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay? So Yahweh Shai is going to come with pure power. 
he's finna come with vengeance. He's finna come with the chariots and the angels. Who he's finna meet? He's finna meet Edom. You see? All right. He's finna meet you. You so-called white people, man. And what Esau made? He made a space force so he can combat Yahweh Shai. What the hell you need a space force for? Because they know that they're finna have to fight Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. Let's go to um Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. It says. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And who is Jesse? Jesse is the father of King David. Okay? It says, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. All right? And basically, this, this prophecy is going into Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh Shai is a descendant of David, a descendant of Jesse. You see? Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. Okay? It says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the, for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his lips. Showing you this is Yahweh Shai. And it says what? And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, man. Let's read that again. It says, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, which is who? The Edomites, man. The so-called white man. Okay? All right? That's, man, this who the, hey. He's going to come after Esau. Let's get this. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Because not only is it in the Old Testament, it's also in the New Testament. It says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. And that's what's happening now. The so-called white man, being the children of Edom, being the wicked, you know, it's being revealed, man. All right, these people identity are being revealed. That's why brother channels getting strike, brother's uh, videos getting taken down. Cause not only are they being revealed, but their plans. You see, it says, "Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth." You know, what's the mouthpiece of the Lord? The prophets, which are bringing out this word that's exposing these devils, man. That's exposing the, their plans. You see, it says, "And shall destroy." With the brightness of his coming, because when Yahweh Shai comes back to the earth, he's finna meet who? He's finna meet Edom. He's finna meet the wicked. Okay? With the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Okay? This is what's finna happen. All right? I got this. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 1, it says, The burden of Egypt. Now we know that what? The virgin daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, one of his titles is what? The great city. Okay? Now who? Now, according to prophecy, the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, will be in Babylon the great end time, in these end times, waiting for the Heavenly Father to send you Howard side to deliver us from America, from the hand of Edom. You see? Now what I was about to say, Okan. One of one of the uh the titles is the great city. Now when you read Revelation eleven and eight, the scriptures say how um the dead bodies which represent the Israelites shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city being what? America, man. Babylon. But when you keep reading, it says the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And that place is what? America, man. American name is also spiritual Egypt. Okay? So this Egypt we're reading right here is talking about America. It says the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. Did we not just read those precepts? Behold, he coming with clouds. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Right? It says, the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, a chariot, a so-called UFO. It says, and shall come into Egypt. All right? Babylon. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it, man. You see that, man? Okay? All right? Now, and, and these people are finna be shook. And not only that, the idols are finna be moved, man. You see, all these gods that you people trust in, y'all finna be throwing them away. The scriptures speak about that, if I'm not mistaken. Then shall every man cast away his idols, you know, roughly paraphrasing, you know? Okay? So the idols finna be moved. You people finna be moved. You finna be shook, you know? And the scripture saying, the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it, man. Okay, so once again, going to the great day of the Lord, man, and Yahweh Shai, he's finna return. Okay, now I want to go to um, uh, Second Ezra chapter thirteen. 
This is book of second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, And it shall come, it says, and it came to pass that after seven days I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there rose a wind from the sea that it moved all the ways thereof. It says, And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Now, what's this man? This man is Yahawashai, man. All right? The spirit say that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Yahawashai is finna come with the chariots, with the angels. Man, he's finna come with his army, his armada, his fleet of ships. Okay? It says, And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So these people are finna tremble at the sight of Yahawashai, man. We one scripture say the kindreds of the earth uh well because of him. Another verse said the trials of the earth shall mourn. And now this scripture say when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. You see? Yahweh Shai finna come with power, man. Okay? It says, And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they heard. All that, it's like all they burned, I heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Now, what's this multitude of men that's going to try and come subdue Yahweh Who are these people that's going to try to come fight Yahweh It's Esau, man, and the, and the, uh, and the, and the, and the, um, the other nations. You see? And let's prove that. Let's go back to, uh, Let's go back to Isaiah, uh, I mean, Revelation 19, and let's keep reading in this chapter. Let's drop down to verse 19. It says, and I saw the beast. What's the beast? The beast is America, NATO, and the EU. The beast is this Roman Empire. You see? The beast represents the Rome and the so-called white man. Okay? It says, and, the, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, okay, and their armies gathered together to make war okay to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army man they're finna try to fight your house they're finna try to subdue your house but what the scripture say these shall make war with the lamb but the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful man you see that so he, hey the house side's finna he's finna he's finna hey he's finna damn man all right he finna make war with Edom, and Edom is finna lose, okay? Which goes back what? To the wicked. All right, now, oh, that's another thing. Remember in Isaiah 11, the scriptures say, with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. A precept for that is in 2nd Ezra. We're finna read about it. It says, it says, um, a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it, which is what? That chariot. That's how big that chariot is finna be, that so-called UFO, man. Ezra's described it as a mountain, man. You see that? Just imagine it, man. Chariot covering the whole sky, all right? And, and, man, you could tell why these people are finna be afraid, okay? It says, and after this, I beheld and lo, oh, so like it says, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I would have seen the regional place where the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld, and lo, and they which were gathered together to subdue him, to fight against him, to try to conquer him, were sore afraid, and yet there's fight. So yeah, these nations and Esau, they're from the fight against the Lord, but Yahweh Shai from the overcome them. He from the subdue them. You see? It says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the great, of the multitude that, were, that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, right? And what did Scripture say? With the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Esau. It says, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which were prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon of a sudden of a renewable multitude, Nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid, man. You see? So they, these, bro, these people don't have a chance against you, I was shy, man. You see? So, uh, basically, that's the video. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this thing close it out. All right? 
It says, and Yahweh I came and spake unto them, saying, All power. Let me read that again, man. All power, okay? All right? Is given unto me in heaven and in earth, man. You see? So Yahweh, it's crazy because I imagine, uh, I imagine like having power, like you know, cause I, I I used like I used to watch anime and I watch it, you know, uh, now, but not really like how I used to, but like uh from uh from time to time, okay, and I and I basically imagine having the power of like basically walking in and out of dimensions, like, cause it's like this anime character that they make like a type of portal, like it's like like it's like pixels and you know, basically they they walk in right, and then they come back out. Basically, like they could walk into a portal on the side of them and come out another portal behind you, man. You see, Yahweh side, he gonna have every man. He's gonna have all power. You know, everything could bend. He could bend. You know, he could he could defy reality. Okay, all types of things, man. Okay, so hey, man, ain't no telling what Yahweh side is finna be able to do and what he will do. You see, well, we know what he's finna do according to prophecy. But what else he could do, man? You see? All right? You, can you imagine, like, all right, he could break the ground, you know, he could form rocks into, you know? All right? Man, it's going to be crazy, man. Controlling water and fire, controlling the elements, you know? He, he caused hurricanes and tornadoes and all types of things. All right? He could make, man, it's going to be crazy, man. All right? But really, that's the point. All right? Lord will, this video is edifying. I'm going to close it out. Again, infinite praise, just honor and glory, too. Yehawah by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yehawah Shai by Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone, time of this truth. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole for elect. Shalom.